Welcome to the fourth lesson in our Web Scraping to Build Social Research Data training series. In the previous lesson, we looked at our first two examples of scraping data from the web. In the first, we looked at how we could extract text stored on a web page. And in the second part, we looked at how we could directly download a file from a web page. Now, today we're going to look at a more complicated um, real example. So we're going to see how we can extract uh, detailed statistics and tables of statistics from a website containing information on COVID-19 uh, data. So this is again, real uh, live website that gets updated, I think multiple times per day with information from different uh, countries. So we're gonna follow the exact same process as we did in lesson three. So if you remember, we've got a six step process for web scraping. We're gonna follow that once more, uh, but this time, you know, the Python code needs to be a slightly more um, advanced to deal with the uh, structure of the web page, but it's nothing special, it's nothing too difficult, uh, and I'm sure you'll have fun um, trying it yourself. So again, first step, we need a piece of information, which is the web page containing uh, the data we want to scrape. So it's a website that's been tracking the development of COVID-19 uh, globally, so it's on the worldometers.info uh, website, and it's got a page relating to coronavirus. Worldometer in general is, is reasonably interesting. It's, um, it's got lots of uh, real, well, quote unquote, real time population level statistics. Um, so you can look at you know, developments of uh, the world's population in, in real time. So again, it'll uh, do its best to retrieve um, good quality data about uh, demographics uh, globally. So we can see uh, again this like quote unquote real time changes in the world's uh, population using official statistics. Um, so it is, a, it is a good reputable source uh, of data. So we're going to be interested in the coronavirus data. And in particular, for this first part of the lesson, we're interested in three simple statistics, uh, global coronavirus cases, um, global deaths, and the total number of people who've uh, recovered. So this is the information we're interested in scraping uh, from the web page. So we've done the first bit, we've, um, we've identified the web page of interest. Now on that web page, we need to identify um, where the information actually is. So again, we've done our, our visual manual inspection. We can use our, our previous trick, which is if we uh, highlight the uh, content we want, and if we right click and select inspect, uh, and I'm on Google, Google Chrome at the moment, you'll be able to see the underlying HTML as it specifically relates to what I've um, highlighted here. So what I'm looking for is an element called uh, div, which is section. So div is divider. Um, so a div tag basically identifies sections uh, on a web page. So I'm looking for a, a div tag with this ID here. So a main counter dash wrap ID. So that's the unique identifier of this particular section. And then within this section, we've got a heading one, which is here. And then the actual figure or statistic itself is contained in a, a sub div, uh, div tag. Um, and then within two span tags, we've got the actual statistic uh, we want to scrape. So you can see now it's getting a little bit more complicated on our previous um, simple examples. But again, we've been able to identify that there is a section with a unique ID and within that section, there's a set of span tags that contains the um, statistic of interest. So now we have our two key pieces of information. We have the web address of the web page, and we have where on that web page uh, the information we want resides. So let's get straight into it. So we've done the, the visual inspection of the code. Um, I've just put it here in the notebook if you want to uh, check again. So we need to uh, move on to the next stage, which is requesting the uh, web page. So there's a few more modules than we've, than we've been used to, but again, it's the, it's the same uh, group of preliminaries. You know, we need the requests module for uh, requesting web pages. We need the beautiful soup module um, for parsing the structure of the web page so Python knows what it's dealing with and a couple of um, kind of data handling modules um, also. Again, I've, I've written quite detailed notes uh, on what's happening here, so we'll just get straight stuck into uh, the web scraping itself. So again, we define the web address and we store it in a variable called URL. We request that URL and then we check the status code. So has it been successfully requested um, or not? So yes, so we've requested the web page I've just shown you in the browser. We get a um, response code of 200, uh, therefore it's been a successful um, request. This is again just to show you um, 
a different way of, of you know naming the variables you know instead of calling it URL I can call it web address instead of you know calling the the results of the request you know response I can call it you know scrape result I'll get the exact same um, result yep so a successful request so that's just a quick example showing you you know that while variable names have some limits on what they can be and um, you know you've got largely unlimited choice in how you name it so it's up to you whatever makes sense and is you know interpretable by you uh, you can choose so again just a very quick look at the metadata associated with the request and um, so here's the date and time that i've made the request and again a lot of stuff which is really only of interest to you know web developers so how long did it take for the server to return the web page to me stuff like that you know it's, it's not it's not terribly um, relevant to our purposes so let's take a look at a, a snippet of that web page so again um, we haven't told Python we're dealing with a web page, it just thinks we're dealing with a mass of text. So here's the first 1,000 characters you know, of the web page um, we've requested, which is in essence just you know, this kind of top uh, bit of code here that you can see, um, yeah, the doc type. So that's just the first 1,000 characters. That moves us on to our second step, which again is telling Python, hey, we're dealing with a web page, um, so let's you know, uh, work with it on those uh, grounds. So again, we use the, the beautiful uh, soup uh, module. It's a very um, detailed web page with lots of content. So what we're gonna do again is just a quick little sample for demonstration purposes. So we'll just interpret the first 1000 characters uh, as if they were um, a HTML page and now take a look at it in Python. Yeah, so here's the first uh, 1000 characters. Now Python recognizes that it's HTML as we've learned before, HTML is hierarchical, and now we can see you know the tag and the, the nested structure uh, of HTML. So now Python is understanding that what we've requested at this link is a web page, and now let's start picking out the bits of information uh, we need. So again, what I want to find is, well rather, are sections um, that are called divs. So I'm gonna try and find all of the div tags that have the unique ID um, of main counter dash uh, wrap. So that sounds obviously a little bit counterintuitive that you know I'm finding all the sections that have a unique ID of, of this. It's obviously not unique uh, to an individual section. There's three sections, but that's uh, absolutely fine. So basically the results of the scrape uh, or the results of this process will find all of uh, these sections. So this is section one, this is section two, and this is section three. So that's what we're asking Python uh, to find. Let's take a look at the uh, results. So great, it seems to have found certainly the first one with the coronavirus cases. Uh, it's found the second section with the um, death statistic and it's found the third one with uh, numbers of recovered uh, patients. So great, so what that has returned out to Python is something called a list. So I've now got a list of uh, results. Because it's a list, then I can start counting how many elements are in the list. Um, I can loop over the list. I can say for every element in the list, you know, print its contents, for example. So if I use the length uh, function in Python, it'll tell me how many um, sections I found. So I found three sections. Excellent. That's good to know. Um, and then I can loop over those sections and say, you know, print, print the details in each one. So here's the first div. Here's the second. And here's uh, the third. So because now I know I, I have a list and it, the list has an order, so the first element in the list is, relates to the coronavirus cases, the second element in the list refers to the uh, deaths and the third refers to the um, numbers of recovered. And I can use that structure of the list to pull out the information uh, that I need. So for example, um, element one of the list, which perhaps counterintuitively is identified by the number zero. So in Python, um, it starts counting from zero. So the first element in a list is identified by the index zero, the second element by the number one, uh, and so on. So it's just a little um, piece of information you need to keep in mind uh, when you're using Python, that it starts counting uh, from zero. So what I want to do then is extract the information within those uh, div tags, uh, specifically the span tags that are within the div tags, uh, and then I want to save those uh, to a variable. So it's best usually to work uh, from uh, right to left, um, perhaps counterintuitively. 
So the first element of the list that's called sections, find the span tags. I know there's only one set of span tags um, within the div, and here it is. So find the span tags, uh, take the text that's contained within the span tags, and then I'm just doing a little bit of cleaning up. I'm saying if you find any white space, um, just delete it. And if you find any commas as well, take, take those out. So that's just a bit of data cleaning and formatting. That's not essential to the extraction. That's just a little bit of uh, tidying uh, up. And again, so for deaths, again, I go to the second element of the list that's called sections, find the span tag, extract the text from the, the span tag, replace any columns that I see, uh, and save the results to this variable um, here. So that's enough chat for me. Let's actually see if it uh, works. So excellent, it does. So I have a variable called cases, which contains this statistic, a variable called debts, which contains this one, and a variable called recoveries, which contains that statistic as well. So we've very successfully requested this web page, parsed it as HTML, and extracted the three key statistics uh, that we were uh, interested um, in. Again, we, we go to the, the final step in, in the web scraping process. I haven't really scraped a lot of data here. You know. I, we can do a lot more than uh, just those three statistics, but just so we, we're doing things properly, um, what I do now is I'm gonna create um, a downloads folder if it doesn't exist. This is just a good idea, um, just so you know everything your web scraping goes into a particular folder. Um, it already exists on my machine, so uh, it doesn't create it. All I'm doing now is basically um, creating a CSV file, so basically a spreadsheet. Um, the spreadsheet will have uh, three um, variable names or three uh, columns, you know, the cases, deaths, recoveries. And then to the first row of that file, I'll um, write those three statistics that we extracted. So that's all that's going on here. It's just setting up the file itself. You know, it's creating the variable names for the file. Um, it's opening the new file. Uh, it's writing to it. And it's writing uh, the information that we um, extracted. Uh, and here we go. So we get in today's date, just so we can name the file a bit more um, appropriately. Again, did I do anything that actually uh, worked so we can check using Python. So I can list the contents of the uh, downloads folder. So again, you can see um, a couple of files have been uh, created. Um, excellent. And is there anything in any of those files? Uh, yes, there is. So the information that I scraped uh, has now been written to the uh, CSV file. And just to have again um, a manual kind of demonstration of, of how that has worked, just so I'm not pulling any wool over your eyes. Um, here are the statistics. There we go. Great, so another very successful um, web scraping. Not terribly exciting. One row of, of observations is not really gonna uh, justify any kind of research funding or any uh, support for what I'm trying to do. So in this next part of the lesson, we're gonna focus on actually scraping coronavirus data for every country uh, in the uh, world.